When I was let in, it was the first time I saw the sport model. I'm convinced that what I saw is absolute proof of that. There is, there is no way we could have created those systems. When Bob Lazar first came forward with his claims about Area 51, what goes on in there and how he was involved in this whole thing, skeptics did not take him seriously. However, with time, more and more people have begun accepting his claims as supportive evidence comes to light. Prepare to be astounded, Bob Lazar has just revealed the last and most terrifying secret that we are not supposed to know. So what exactly has Lazar unveiled and what implications could they hold for our understanding of the world around us? Join us as we explore the surprising details. Before we delve into the recent revelations, it's crucial to understand some context about Bob Lazar. Who is Bob Lazar? Bob Lazar is a polarizing figure in the USA who captivated audiences worldwide, starting from the 80s, with his extraordinary claims of involvement in secret government projects. Central to his narrative is Area 51, his role as an expert in reverse engineering alien spacecraft components for the U.S. Air Force, the story behind the hundreds of UFO sightings, and the role of the enigmatic Element 115 in alien spacecraft capable of interstellar travel. Lazar claims that Element 115 possesses extraordinary properties far beyond those observed in naturally occurring elements. According to him, this element serves as the cornerstone of advanced extraterrestrial propulsion systems capable of generating gravity waves to manipulate space-time, thus facilitating interstellar travel. When he first came forward with this claim, the element was only theoretical, with no real evidence, but that has changed now, and it is a big deal. But to make any sense of things, we must look at Lazar's story from the very beginning. Born on January 26, 1959, Robert Scott Lazar gained popularity and notoriety when he came to the limelight for claiming that he was hired in the late 1980s to work on reverse engineering technology of extraterrestrial origin. Lazar alleges that this work took place at a covert facility known as S-4, located a few kilometers south of Area 51, a highly classified United States Air Force installation. According to official records that Lazar contests, Lazar pursued higher education at Pierce Junior College in Los Angeles. Lazar, however, asserts that he got his master's degrees from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and the California Institute of Technology, Caltech. Anyways, in 1982, Lazar entered the workforce as a technician for a contractor company associated with the Los Alamos Maison Physics Facility. This facility operated within the renowned Los Alamos National Laboratory, known for its contributions to nuclear research and development. Here, Lazar gained practical experience in scientific and technical fields, although the specifics of his duties remain unclear. Financial struggles surfaced in Lazar's life, as evidenced by his bankruptcy filing in 1986. He then established his own business venture having fallen out of favor with the government. Lazar founded and currently operates United Nuclear Scientific Equipment and Supplies. This business specializes in the sale of various materials and chemicals involved in scientific research and experimentation. Through United Nuclear, Lazar has maintained a presence in the scientific community, albeit in a commercial capacity. However, it is Lazar's claims of involvement in secret government projects related to extraterrestrial technology that have garnered the most attention and controversy, shaping his identity as a polarizing figure in the realm of conspiracy theories and UFO lore. Out of this world claims, Lazar vaulted into the public consciousness in 1989 as an enigmatic figure synonymous with the Area 51 conspiracy theories. He was interviewed by investigative luminary George Knapp, under the pseudonym Dennis, and this catalyzed his ascent into public notoriety. Lazar claimed that he was employed at S-4, a secretive subsidiary facility nestled near the hallowed grounds of Area 51. The site, he claims, hosts hangars nestled within mountainous terrain, housing otherworldly artifacts ripe for reverse engineering. Lazar claims that it was his job to reverse engineer this extraterrestrial technology, particularly the iconic sport model flying saucer. He claimed that these alien spacecraft, which were at times spotted by people and even military personnel before being captured by the government, were fueled by antimatter reactors fueled by Element 115. 
The element, when put to use this way, was capable of generating gravity waves to manipulate space-time. Of course, he was unable to table any tangible evidence or empirical validation for his claims. He asserts that our planet has been entangled in a millennia-long dalliance with gray aliens hailing from the twin binary star system Zeta Reticuli. Critics, however, have pointed to the absence of corroborating evidence. Despite the controversy and skepticism swirling around his assertions, Lazar continues to wield considerable influence. After his ascent to fame, he found himself thrust into the spotlight once more in 2017, when law enforcement agencies descended upon his workplace for a rather dramatic raid. The official narrative was clear. Lazar was involved in illicit activities, however, he denies these allegations. Instead, he asserts that the government is trying to shut him up now that the evidence for his claims is coming to light. His supporters argue that there is some degree of truth to it. After all, claims of UFO sightings are anything but rare. In July 1947, reports emerged of a flying disc crashing near Roswell, New Mexico. The U.S. military initially confirmed the recovery of a flying saucer, but later retracted the statement, attributing the debris to a weather balloon. The Roswell incident would not be the last of its kind, and it fuels speculation about extraterrestrial spacecraft to this day. Five years later, multiple unidentified objects were detected on radar over Washington, D.C., leading to visual sightings by military personnel and civilians. The Washington, D.C. UFO incident prompted the U.S. Air Force to conduct Project Blue Book, a study of UFO sightings. Heightened Cold War tensions during the 1950s and 1960s coincided with a surge in UFO sightings, leading to speculation that unidentified aerial phenomena could be advanced Soviet technology or extraterrestrial craft. The U.S. Air Force officially ended Project Blue Book in 1969, concluding that the majority of UFO sightings were misidentifications of natural phenomena or conventional aircraft. However, this did not dispel support for other explanations. A decade later, in 1980, military personnel stationed at RAF Bentwaters in England reported encounters with a UFO in Rendlesham Forest. Witnesses described seeing a metallic object emitting colored lights and exhibiting unusual behavior. It was by the end of this decade that former government physicist Bob Lazar came to the spotlight and alleged that he worked on reverse engineering extraterrestrial spacecraft at Area 51. Eight years later, Thousands of witnesses in Arizona reported seeing a series of lights in the night sky, forming a triangular pattern. The event dubbed the Phoenix Lights garnered widespread attention and speculation, with theories ranging from military flares to extraterrestrial craft. Fast forward to 2017, and the New York Times reported on the existence of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, a secret Pentagon initiative to investigate UFO sightings. Following this, the U.S. Department of Defense released three videos captured by Navy pilots in 2020, showing encounters with unidentified aerial phenomena. While officials stated that the objects were unidentified, the disclosure fueled speculation about government knowledge of UFOs. Despite scientific skepticism and government denials, speculation surrounding UFOs persists, fueled by continued sightings, declassified documents, and popular culture references. It's easy to see that Lazar's claims did not come forward in a vacuum, and his supporters do have a reason to take him seriously. Area 51 and Flying Saucers Lazar has been prominently featured on various platforms, amplifying his narrative to a broader audience. In a recently released documentary titled Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers, produced by George Knapp and Jeremy Kenyon Lockyer Corbell, Lazar's story takes center stage. Through interviews, archival footage, and investigative reporting, the documentary delves into Lazar's experiences at Area 51's S-4 facility. This film delves into the personal journey of the cosmic whistleblower, chronicling the challenges and dilemmas he faced after disclosing classified information. Caught between his allegiance to his country and his conscience, Lazar grappled with the profound implications of his revelations. Director Corbel sheds light on Lazar's groundbreaking claims and the profound impact they had on his life over the past three decades. Additionally, Lazar's account reached millions of listeners through his appearance on Joe Rogan's widely popular podcast. 
Rogan's platform provided Lazar with an opportunity to expound upon his claims and engage in discussions about the implications of his alleged experiences. Furthermore, Lazar engaged in conversations about UFOs and advanced propulsion systems with David Fravor, a respected Navy pilot and commander known for his first-hand encounter with an unidentified flying object during the USS Nimitz incident in 2004. In 2004, Commander David Fravor of the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group encountered a mysterious object off the coast of Southern California. Fravor, along with others, observed an oval-shaped craft hovering above the ocean, exhibiting unusual flight patterns. A subsequent investigation, including video footage captured by Lieutenant Commander Chad Underwood, added to the mystique. Similar incidents occurred from 2014 to 2015, involving pilots from the USS Theodore Roosevelt. The videos captured unexplained aerial objects, challenging conventional explanations. Despite various hypotheses, including terrestrial drones or instrumentation errors, the enigma surrounding these encounters persists. The Pentagon UFO videos were thrust into the spotlight by the New York Times and the Washington Post in December 2017. Dubbed Fleur, Gimbal, and Go Fast, these recordings stirred intense speculation among UFO enthusiasts. Former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, Christopher Mellon and ex-director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, Luis Elizondo, brought these videos to public attention. The latter even resigned from the Pentagon, citing frustration with government secrecy and resistance to investigation. The Pentagon's official release of the videos in April 2020 marked a significant development. In 2021, additional videos depicting unidentified triangular and spherical objects were released. The saga extended into 2023 with the release of more MQ-9 drone footage from various regions, including the Middle East and South Asia. While some sightings were eventually attributed to conventional aircraft or artifacts, others defied easy categorization or explanation. The Department of Defense categorized these aerial phenomena as unidentified. Skeptics attribute the visuals to instrument malfunction, human observational errors, or sightings of common aircraft or aerial devices. Astrophysicist Adam Frank, for instance, suggests that the observed phenomena could be advanced drones deployed by rival nations to gather intelligence on U.S. defense capabilities. The U.S. Navy also encouraged pilots to report disturbances promptly. In 2023, former pilot David Fravor reiterated his belief in the superior technology exhibited by the encountered phenomena during a congressional hearing. On June 25, 2021, the U.S. Office of the Director of National Intelligence released a preliminary report addressing the UFO sighting. The report outlined five potential categories to explain UAP sightings, airborne clutter, natural atmospheric phenomena, U.S. government or industry technology, foreign craft, and an other category. The videos were also featured in the History Channel series Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation and discussed on platforms like the Joe Rogan Experience. So far, no conclusive identification has been finalized. Element 115 powers extraterrestrial spacecraft. During the 1980s and 1990s, Bob Lazar proposed that the mysterious Element 115 was used as a power source for the alien technology he worked on. Initially met with skepticism and criticism from mainstream scientists and researchers, Lazar faced considerable challenges in substantiating his extraordinary assertions. Many dismissed his claims as outlandish and lacking credible evidence, leading to attempts to discredit his credibility in the early 1990s. Back when Lazar made these assertions, Element 115 was only theoretical. However, today, the element, officially known as Moscovium, is a real synthetic element with the atomic number 115. It was first synthesized in a laboratory setting in 2003 by Russian and American scientists. Lazar claimed that what is now known as Moscovium played a crucial role in UFO propulsion systems. Back then, the claim was groundbreaking and controversial. Plus, since there was no empirical evidence to support his claims, his words carried minimal weight. However, that has changed now. Lazar suggested that element 115 could be transformed into another element, now known as Livermorium, through proton bombardment. First synthesized in 2000, 
Livermorium is a synthetic element named after the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Lazar theorized that Livermorium is an intermediate state that decays to yield gravity waves. These gravity waves are ripples in space-time that propagate outward from massive objects moving through space. According to him, these gravity waves are integral to the propulsion mechanisms of UFOs, allowing them to manipulate gravitational forces and achieve extraordinary speeds and maneuvers. Despite the initial backlash, Lazar's claims experienced a resurgence of interest in the early 2000s when scientists discovered Muscovium. This provided some degree of vindication for Lazar, as it lent credence to the possibility of element 115 and its potential applications in creating gravitational fields. Lazar claims that extraterrestrial craft are powered by gravity reactors fueled by element 115. He claims that gravity amplifiers are integral to the maneuverability of these spacecraft. These gravity amplifiers manipulate gravitational forces, allowing for rapid acceleration, sharp turns, and other advanced maneuvers that defy conventional physics. While some researchers and enthusiasts view Lazar as a credible whistleblower, whose testimony offers valuable insights into the phenomenon of unidentified aerial objects, others remain skeptical questioning the veracity of his claims and the lack of tangible evidence to support them. Divided opinions among researchers and enthusiasts reflect the broader challenges inherent in assessing claims of extraordinary phenomena. If element 115 were to possess the properties described by Bob Lazar, it could potentially be used in a nuclear fusion reactor for spacecraft propulsion. Nuclear fusion involves combining atomic nuclei to release energy, much like the sun and stars. An element 115 reactor could use the element as a fuel source for nuclear fusion reactions. When bombarded with protons or other particles, element 115 could undergo fusion reactions, releasing a tremendous amount of energy and generating thrust for spacecraft propulsion. The reactor would provide a highly efficient and powerful energy source for spacecraft, potentially enabling faster and more efficient space travel compared to conventional propulsion systems. It could also allow spacecraft to travel longer distances without the need for frequent refueling. Even in science fiction, the concept of using exotic elements for advanced propulsion systems is a common theme. For example, in the Star Trek universe, dilithium crystals are used to regulate the matter-antimatter reactions in warp engines, providing the energy needed for faster-than-light travel. A gravity amplifier, as described by Lazar, would manipulate gravitational forces to control the motion and trajectory of a spacecraft. The idea is to create artificial gravitational fields that propel the craft in a desired direction. In science fiction, the concept of gravity manipulation for propulsion is a common trope. For example, in the movie Interstellar, the spacecraft Endurance uses a gravity drive to manipulate gravity and traverse vast distances in space. How do the science fiction references fit in? Well, we know for a fact that a lot of things that were once only theoretical or fictional are real today. For example, we can look at Arthur C. Clarke's prediction of geostationary satellites in his 1945 paper, Wireless World. Clarke proposed the concept of placing satellites in geostationary orbit to facilitate global telecommunications. This idea was initially considered far-fetched, but became a reality with the launch of the first geostationary communications satellite, SYNCOM-3, in 1964. And the rest is history. While the ideas of an Element 115 reactor and a gravity amplifier are so far speculative, since there is no hard evidence for either, they do provide intriguing possibilities for advanced spacecraft propulsion systems. However, those who assert that Lazar is telling the whole truth often point to the level of secrecy associated with the facilities that he's worked at. Area 51. Area 51 is a highly classified United States Air Force facility situated within the Nevada Test and Training Range. Officially known as Homey Airport or Groom Lake, the base is shrouded in secrecy. While officially designated as an open training range, Area 51 is widely believed to be involved in the development and testing of experimental aircraft and weapons systems. The facility is located approximately 83 miles north-northwest of Las Vegas and has become a focal point for conspiracy theories and UFO folklore due to the intense secrecy surrounding its operations. 
Area 51 gained significant public attention when the CIA publicly acknowledged its existence in 2013 following a Freedom of Information Act request. However, the details of the base's activities still remain classified as top secret or sensitive compartmented information. The surrounding area, including the nearby town of Rachel, along what is called the Extraterrestrial Highway, has become a popular destination for tourists and UFO enthusiasts. Over the years, Area 51 has been given various nicknames, including Dreamland and Paradise Ranch. The history of the area dates back to the discovery of lead and silver in the southern part of the Groom Range in 1864. Mining operations flourished in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The airfield at Groom Lake began service in 1942 and played a crucial role during the Second World War. Despite the declassification of some information about Area 51, much of its activities and purpose remain veiled in secrecy. Officially, Area 51 has long been associated with the development and testing of cutting-edge aerospace technology, including advanced aircraft and weapon systems. The facility has been involved in the testing of stealth technology, unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs, and experimental propulsion systems. Over the years, Area 51 has been associated with several highly classified projects, many of which have contributed to significant advancements in military aviation and technology. One such initiative was Project Oxcart, a highly secretive program conducted in the 1960s to develop the Lockheed A-12 reconnaissance aircraft, which later evolved into the SR-71 Blackbird. These aircraft were designed for high-altitude, high-speed reconnaissance missions. The Project Have Blue is focused on the development of stealth technology and resulted in the creation of the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, the world's first operational stealth aircraft. The F-117 was used extensively during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Another stealth technology program, Project Tacit Blue aimed to develop a low-observable reconnaissance aircraft for operating in hostile environments without detection. The aircraft featured an unconventional cranked kite design to minimize radar cross-section Project Aquatone involved the testing and development of the U-2 reconnaissance aircraft, which played a critical role in intelligence gathering during the Cold War. The U-2 was used for high-altitude reconnaissance missions over Soviet territory. An extension of Project Aquatone, named Senior Trend, involved the development of improved variants of the U-2 aircraft with enhanced reconnaissance capabilities, including the ability to collect signals intelligence and electronic intelligence. These projects represent just a fraction of the classified research and development activities believed to have taken place at Area 51. The facility's remote location and stringent security measures have made it an ideal testing ground for some of the most advanced and secretive aerospace projects in history. Naturally, the facility has been a focal point of speculation and intrigue for decades. Area 51 is surrounded by a perimeter that is strictly off-limits to civilian and regular military air traffic. Security measures are rigorously enforced, with frequent checks of security clearances and stringent regulations prohibiting cameras and weaponry within the area. Military pilots training in the vicinity face severe consequences if they inadvertently stray into the exclusionary airspace surrounding Groom Lake. Surveillance of the perimeter is also extensive, with buried motion sensors. Only a small group of passenger aircraft, known as the Janet Fleet, have access to the facility. The facility transports military personnel, primarily from Harry Reid International Airport, Official acknowledgement of Area 51's existence came in 1998 when the United States Air Force acknowledged its presence. However, details about its activities remained classified until the CIA released an official history in 2013. The perimeter is marked by orange posts and patrolled by guards equipped to enforce strict security protocols. They are authorized to use deadly force against trespassers, and this is in no way only a deterrent. In 2019, a man attempting a breach of security was shot dead by the guards. The Storm Area 51 Inches event of 2019 garnered significant attention and led to the organization of music festivals in the vicinity. However, it is virtually impossible to actually storm the facility, even by force. 
Area 51 has long been steeped in mystery and speculation, fueling a bunch of modern conspiracy theories. One of the most enduring theories, as Bob Lazar has asserted, suggests that Area 51 is involved in the storage, examination, and reverse engineering of crashed alien spacecraft. Some theories propose that Area 51 serves as a site for meetings or joint ventures with extraterrestrial beings, implying a level of cooperation or interaction between humans and aliens. Another hypothesis suggests that the facility is engaged in the development of advanced energy weapons, possibly for initiatives like the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, commonly known as Star Wars. There are also claims that Area 51 is involved in the development of technologies related to weather control, time travel, and teleportation, pushing the boundaries of scientific exploration into the realms of the extraordinary. It is also speculated that Area 51 plays a role in the development of exotic propulsion systems, particularly linked to projects like the Aurora program, which may involve technologies far beyond conventional aerospace engineering. Other theories tie Area 51 to the broader conspiracy of a one-world government, suggesting that the activities conducted within the facility serve the interests of a secretive global elite. While there is no official validation for any of these theories, the layers of secrecy don't help at all. AARO revelations. Recently, however, the government has opened up about UFO sightings associated with Area 51. A recent BBC article claims that the government has tried to explain the surge in UFO sightings during the 1950s and 60s. The government claims that all of this can largely be attributed to tests of advanced U.S. spy planes and space technology. The Pentagon's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or the AARO, emphasizes that there is no evidence to suggest that the U.S. government has encountered alien life. Instead, it concluded that most sightings of UFOs were simply ordinary objects from Earth, often misidentified due to various factors. Major General Pat Ryder, a Pentagon spokesperson, emphasized that extensive investigative efforts spanning classified archives and government investigations dating back to 1945 consistently pointed to simple explanations for the majority of UFO sightings. The report debunked several rumors and myths surrounding alleged encounters with alien spacecraft. The report highlighted the role of high-altitude balloons and reconnaissance aircraft like the U-2 spy plane in generating spikes in UFO reports during the mid-20th century. Additionally, it revealed that certain secret research projects, including the development of aircraft resembling the iconic saucer-shaped UFOs, contributed to public confusion and speculation. Despite the efforts to demystify UFO sightings, the AARO noted that reports of UAP sightings continue at a steady rate, with 50 to 100 sightings reported each month. Speculation about government cover-ups persists, fueled by distrust in official narratives. Atmosphere of government mistrust. Of course, that mistrust persists, and is the reason why Bob Lazar became as prominent as he did. However, in all fairness, Bob Lazar's claims about Area 51 and the technology developed there, particularly regarding Element 115 and gravity amplifiers, diverge significantly from established scientific principles and current understanding. Lazar asserted that Element 115, sourced from extraterrestrial spacecraft, could be used as a fuel for gravity reactors, enabling the manipulation of gravitational fields. However, as of now, Element 115, officially known as Moscovium, has a very short half-life and no known practical applications. Lazar also claimed that gravity amplifiers derived from Element 115 could provide spacecraft with extraordinary maneuverability. However, propulsion systems based on gravity manipulation remain purely speculative and have no basis in scientific reality. Real-life space propulsion technologies are grounded in chemical rockets and ion propulsion. Theoretical concepts such as warp drives are subject to significant technological and theoretical challenges. While scientific progress continues to push the boundaries of what's possible, claims like those made by Lazar regarding Element 115 and gravity amplifiers remain firmly in the realm of speculative fiction rather than scientific fact. That's not all. In 1990, Lazar was arrested for aiding and abetting an escort service, for which he pleaded guilty. 
He was ordered to do 150 hours of community service, stay away from such establishments, and undergo psychotherapy. Sixteen years later, Lazar and his wife, Joy White, were charged with violating the Federal Hazardous Substances Act for shipping restricted chemicals across state lines. They pleaded guilty to three criminal counts related to their arrest. A year later, in 2007, his company, United Nuclear, was fined $7,500 for violating a law prohibiting the sale of materials used to make illegal fireworks. Lazar's criminal activity has cast further doubt on his assertions, but those who believe him refuse to buckle. In any case, the notion of interstellar space travel, while captivating, remains a monumental challenge for humankind due to the vast distances involved and the limitations of our current technology. Concepts like warp drives and wormholes, popularized in science fiction, are intriguing but largely theoretical. However, recent advancements in propulsion systems and space exploration technologies, such as ion propulsion and the study of exoplanets, offer glimpses of potential pathways toward interstellar travel. Nonetheless, the practicality of such endeavors remains uncertain. Regarding the existence of extraterrestrial life, the sheer expanse of the universe suggests that the likelihood of life beyond Earth is plausible even if we have yet to discover conclusive evidence of intelligent civilizations. The discovery of exoplanets in habitable zones and the presence of organic molecules in space hint at the possibility of life elsewhere. Additionally, the vastness of space and the limitations of our current observational capabilities mean that we may have only scratched the surface of what lies beyond our solar system. Therefore, while we may not have encountered extraterrestrial civilizations, the potential for their existence remains a tantalizing prospect. As for Lazar's claims, while they have been met with skepticism, there is still a remote possibility that some aspects of his story may hold truth. The history of government cover-ups, particularly during the Cold War era, adds a layer of intrigue to discussions of classified military projects and UFO phenomena. Examples such as Project Blue Book in the United States and similar efforts in the now former Soviet Union underscore the secrecy surrounding military technologies. For now, interstellar space travel, extraterrestrial life, and claims of classified government projects like Lazar's experiences at Area 51 evoke both fascination and skepticism. While the scientific and technological challenges of interstellar travel are formidable, the vastness of the cosmos suggests that the search for extraterrestrial life remains a compelling endeavor. Meanwhile, the possibility of government cover-ups and the enigmatic nature of classified military projects fuel speculation. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't miss this video you see on your screen right now. It's truly unbelievable.